Hello. Hi, everyone. Okay, I can't see any hands, so um, who wants to kick us off? Can I go first then? Um, uh, John, John Cross in the mirror here. Um, Mikel, in, in, your, in your TV interview, you, first of all, you must be very disappointed with the performance, but in your TV interview, you say it's the first time you've not played as a team. What, what, what do you mean by that? I, I don't feel like, um, like we were the team that we're supposed to be. We, we performed below our standards, our ability, and I didn't see the spirit for the first time uh, since I'm here that uh, I've seen every day in training and I see every day when we compete. And this is totally my fault because this is why I'm here. I'm responsible for that to make sure that the team performs at the highest level and competes at the highest level every three days. And today I haven't managed to do that. So obviously it's, it's my fault. Can you look for reasons, Mikel, as to, as to why that, that is or any reason why? It's very hard to find the reasons. Um, I cannot say that I've seen a change or this week they train a different way. I would be lying if I say that. Um, but obviously there was something there today that they wanted much more than us and they showed it. At the end of the day, if you are late... In every decision making, if you don't win enough duels, if every second ball is for us, if you don't show the quality that we have with the ball, you cannot defend your box. In the opponent's box, when you get the chances, you don't even hit the target. It's a really complicated way to win football matches. So, How frustrating is the inconsistency at the moment and also the lack of creativity? Because you're probably not creating as many chances as, as you know the players are capable of. Yeah, but that's uh, <clears throat> something obviously that we have to improve and when we create them as well. We need to be more ruthless. But again, I wouldn't like to appoint anybody. I'm saying that today it wasn't about that. It was about how we went about the job and who we were as a team and, um, and where we were transmitting as a team. And I didn't like it from the first whistle, the way we conceded and I still got away from from the goal uh, with the VAR and afterwards. And um, it's just not good enough. Hi, Mikel. Um, we saw um, Pierre didn't have a single shot on target in the game. He's only had 10 across all eight Premier League games so far this season. But with his goal scoring record in the past, do you need to start getting him into positions where he is more involved? And, and how do you go about doing that? Yeah, but that's a, a team function. And that's a collective thing that uh, we have to do more. Um, we certainly are getting in some situations. Um, the end product, obviously, is something that we have to improve. And uh, about his position and his movement and where we can find him, of course, we can talk about um, is this the right or the wrong place for him. But when things were working and he was scoring, that debate um, wasn't there. What is certain is that with these numbers, scoring this amount of goals, it's impossible to be fighting with the top teams. So we have to maintain the numbers that we had defensively in our organization. And for sure, we have to improve our numbers um, attacking wise if we want to be challenging there. And if you want to be consistent winning football matches, for sure. And then can I just check Thomas Partey? Was that more of a, a um, just a, a thigh injury, I believe? How, how bad was that? We don't know. We have to scan in tomorrow, the day after, and see. But he felt it straight away after seven or ten minutes, and um, and let's see what uh, the magnitude of the injury. Hi, Mikel. You, you stuck with the same team that did so well at Man United last week, and then the change is dramatic today. Does that mean you have to rethink what you think your best lineup is? Yeah, but sometimes. Uh, when you see the boys play the way they played uh, seven days ago, not 70, seven days ago, and yeah. you see them play today, is the beauty of this sport as well. And unfortunately, you cannot take anything for granted and things change really quickly. Um, I'm a very positive person and when things happen like this, you take a lot of things from it and you learn and you get to know the players and where we are in a, in a much deeper way. So I want to see the reaction from myself first, because as well as the first time that I have to see with my eyes, my team perform at that level since I arrived here. And obviously it hurts big time, 
But at the same time, as I said, it's, it's my joy to make sure that these boys do that on the pitch all the time. And today, for sure, I haven't managed to do that. Does Partey's injury automatically mean he won't be going on international duty? Well, I don't know. As I said, uh, the doctors have to have a look at him, probably scan him, and then we will decide what to do with him. OK, cheers. Thanks. Thank you. James, CBS. Um, hi, Mikel. A lot of what you've been saying there is, is to do with, with attitude, and, and that's understandable. Will you be reassessing the system you play over the international break? It, it it sometimes seems like you don't have the numbers in the penalty area when you have the ball in advanced areas. Yes, for sure. And we do that uh, every week. You know how we can get into better positions in the final third with certain numbers, a position that has to be all the time occupied. The same of how we control the transition moments after not finishing that action of or when, when the ball leaves that uh, box but uh, certainly as you said we will look at that again and and try to modify certain things to get uh, better like we always do and Lacker and William seem to be really struggling for for confidence right now what, what's your message to them again that my job is to get the best out of the players and put them in in the best possible scenarios as much as possible and if they are not performing it's because we have to help them more Charles from Goal. Hi, Mikel. Just um, a little bit more on Lacker and Willian there. I think, obviously, Willian hasn't contributed a meaningful goal or assist since the opening weekend. Lacker hasn't scored since the end of September. Is it, was it, did it, did it just, just feel like time now that you've got to try something new in that front three? If it is moving Orber in or if it is bringing Pepe in and giving him a good run of games now, is, it, is the time sort of come to change things now just to try and get the team scoring again? We will consider those things uh, when we looked back at all the games that we played since uh, the last international break and I will depend who is in good form, who is in good spirits, how the boys react after that defeat as well and we'll try to make the, the right adjustments. You must have been tempted tonight to, to start with, with Nico after his goal and assist in, in midweek. Yeah, but my, me personally, more than just the stats I looked at, many other things, um, we just focus on that of course. There are certain players that have to play yes or yes. And um, and we looked at other things as well without obviously um, forgiving or forgetting, sorry, uh, what you mentioned. Thanks. Last yeah. one, Ashley. Ashley Priest. Hi, Mikel. Um, how impressed were you with Aston Villa today? Or was it just down to your players having an off night? Yes, I said to him, uh, congratulations to them and uh, big credit for the way they've played um, I've seen them a lot in the last few days, obviously, and some of the performance they put in, they were top draw. And when you are not at the races and this team is at their best, they have the quality players to to hurt you. And um, I think they were really good tonight. Thanks, Mikael. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.